So now looking at these two functions, we have two of them graphed. I know it doesn't seem like it, so let me let me change this. Hold on one sec. Okay, I've got them now. There we go. Okay, so now you can see it. There's a green one kind of up above, and there's a red one, or maroon one, if you will, kind of down below. So what I wanted to get at was, what's the difference between the two? You know, what does, you know, comparing these two, what does that tell you? So you notice they have the same steepness, if you will. Right, this bit up here, you know, think of the, where the 8 is, right there is exactly the same slope as the negative 8 down here. So they have the same steepness, and that's because, because both have a base of 2. Right? But, and it's a big but, right? there's one that is significantly different than the other, right? Because even though they have the same steepness, they don't have the same intercepts. So um, f of x, oops, sorry, I did that wrong. f of x, thank you, there we go, copy and paste, there we go, has a positive y-intercept, 0, comma 4. Right, is the y-intercept. And that's because a is 4, because a equals 4. And then the uh, g of x, excuse me, g of x equals negative 4 to the x has y-intercept 0, comma, negative 4, because, here, let me do this, b slash c, because a is equal to negative 4 on that one. And that, my friends, is the big difference between, right? So, and you can see it, there's something special going on here, right? And that is that f of x and g of x are reflections of each other. I can spell that word across the x-axis, right? Because they have the same base 2, but opposite um, a values. And that's what this part down here says reflection property says that if you have two functions, negative a b to the x and positive a to b to the x, then they will be reflections. That's the word that should go in there. Reflections. There we go. Of each other across the x-axis. And that's what we just saw happening right there. All right. So we have to kind of pull together a lot of stuff that we've learned here. Um, the domain Okay, so if you look at any four of these, these are all four exponential functions. This is all you got. So you could have this blue one where a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1. See that? b is greater than 1 down here. Or you could have a negative and b is greater than 1. That's that one. Then you could have a greater than 0. That's why it hits at the positive value. But b is a fraction. That's why it shrinks. And then a negative and b is a fraction means it grows. So let's see. The domain of any one of these, look at that blue one here, red one here, blue one here, red one here, is all real numbers. No matter what, they always go forever to the left, forever to the right, no trouble. Now if a is greater than zero, that's the two blue ones. So look at the two blue ones. If a is greater than zero, then the range is, remember range goes low to high. So you want to go zero, comma, oops, 0, comma, infinity, because they go forever on the high side. Look, look at the blue one. Forget the red one's there. Just look at the blue one. It skims along 0 like a surfboard, right? But it never actually gets there. That's why you have to have a parentheses, because it never actually touches. So you skim along it, so 0 all the way up, 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 up to forever, because that arrow keeps going forever and ever and ever. All right, that's the two blue ones. This blue one's the same way. Zero, because it, it skims along zero like a surfboard, zero being in the x-axis. And then it goes all the way up to forever. 
Now, what about the other ones, the two red ones? How low do they go? Well, they go forever on the low direction, so they're negative infinity all the way up to zero, but they never actually touch zero because you can't, right? So it gets right up to it really, really close, but it never actually reaches it. Remember that table that we had from that previous problem? You can see I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller numbers over there, but they're not zero. They're never going to be zero, ever. Right? That's why zero gets a parenthesis, not a bracket, not a hard um, bracket shape. All right, so that's the domain and range of exponential functions. And what we were just seeing there, what we were just talking about, is the fact that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So that means that it kind of skims along it. Right? The graph reaches but never touches. The graph gets really close to the x-axis, i.e. 0. but never touches it. Technically, it's y equals 0. The x-axis is when y is equal to 0, right? Because you don't go up or down at all. So, But never touches. Never is equal to 0, ever. That's what a horizontal asymptote means. It means it skims along it. All right, so next I have some functions graphed. So for this problem, I just got to warn you ahead of time, there is a typo here. This is supposed to be 1.25, and this is supposed to be 1.40. If I'm supposed to match the graphs that I actually have on this paper, then that's what's going to have to be. Okay, so you can see you've got these four different graphs, um, and you're supposed to compare the steepness, and what does each one of these tell? So you, you kind of think to yourself, well, how am I going to know that? Well, good question. All right, so let's start with the two that are going to be 0.65 and 0.8. Now, automatically, you should know that they all cross at 0, 1, right? All of them, all four of them. See that point where they meet? 0, 1, because every single one of these graphs has an A value of 1, right? But then you should also notice that the first two, let me put them up here, have 0.65 to the x and 0.8 to the x. Well, those are both going to be shrinking, and the reason you can tell is because b is a fraction. Remember what it said. Uh, right back, sorry, i got to go back to it. Here, it says, hey, if a is um, greater than 0, which it is, a is 1 in this case, and b is a number between 0 and 1, it's the second one right here, it's exponential decay. It's going to look like the second graph over here, exponential decay. Don't believe me? Well, I'm, I'm right, I swear, but in case you don't believe me, let me scroll back down. Sorry, I was fiddling around with this. Then let's graph it. Oh, I'm going to do like a standard window just so you can see. There's one, that was 0.65, and there's the 0.8. Now, if you want to make it so your window matches the window you've got, you got to go negative 12, enter to 12, enter. And then we don't really care about the tick marks and stuff, but um, negative 12, enter to 12. I don't really know why I did negative 12 down there, because you don't really need it, but, you know, hey. Notice none of them are going to those zeros. They're all surfing along that x-axis, but they never actually get there. So the one that I typed in first, which is 0.65, that's the one it graphed first. That's this one right here. And then the second one it graphed was 0.8. Right? So let me graph it again. 0.65 comes in like that. 0.8 is like that. Alrighty then. So let me label those graphs. Hold on one sec. There we go. So now we're noticing something, hopefully. And that is the farther the b is from 0, look at the, or from 1, excuse me. Because 0.8 is closer to 1. If you have 80 cents, that's closer to a dollar than 65 cents, right? So the farther b is from 1, the steeper the graph's curve. Now let's see if the other side bears us out on this, because that's what I think. So if that's the case, then I think this is going to be 1.40, this one that has kind of like a, a yellow color. And I think the blue is going to be 1.25. Let's see if I'm right. So let me go to y equals. 
I'm actually going to leave these two equations in here. I'm just going to turn them off. If you move left to the equal sign and kind of press enter, they're still there, but it won't graph them because they're not selected. So let me type 1.25 to the x, and I know that's a typo. It was 1.25, sorry about that, and then 1.40. To the caret x, like that. Okay, and again, both of those missed numbers were wrong in the notes. Please fix them. 1.25, 1.40 should be what you have. 1.25 is coming first. There, that one is. And 1.40 is right there. It's steeper, right? If you were a skier, that would be a much more dangerous slope, right? So let me label them. Hold on one sec. There we go. So it's still working out for me, right? The farther it is from 1, 1 1.40 is farther away from 1 than 1 1.25. 1.25 is only 0.25 away. 1.40 is 0.40 away. So the farther the b is from 1, the steeper the graph's curve. The closer b is to 1, the shallower the curve, if you will. Less steep. More safe to ski down. <laughs> and I also want to make a note. Note all four of these graphs have a y-intercept of 0, 1 because a is equal to 1 for each of them. What else? Um, the other thing I want to note it real quickly is that so um, f of x and g of x are decreasing, right? Exponential decay. Because a is equal to 1, which is positive, but 0 is less than b, which is less than 1. In other words, um, b is between 0 and 1. It's a fraction between 0 and 1. All right? And then while we're on the same subject, right? F or h of x and j of x are increasing. Hold on. Let's see. h of x and j of x are increasing exponential growth because a is equal to 1, which is greater than 0, but b is greater than 1, right? And again, see page, uh, let's see, what page of the notes was that? That right there, that box on page 80, so important. If a is greater than 0, that means they're both above the x-axis. And if b is greater than 1, it grows. If b is a fraction between 0 and 1, it shrinks, it decays. So it's just a reminder of all that stuff that we've already learned. Oh, rats. I still missed the page. I'm sorry. 80. Page 80. Okay. I'm going to put these over here to the side. All right. We're all done with that section. Um, see you back here for 4.4, which is going to be some more um, modeling and base multiplier property. See you then.